Oh man, I'm not an ultra runner right now, but if I was, I would, I would 100% consider the shoe for 50K and above racing, all right? I would... out there testing oh man and there's the mileage on your screen right now for the hoka speed goat 5 oh yeah that is the shoe that's gonna sell out all right it's not available as of this publishing right now but when it does become available i don't know exactly when if i can figure that out the exact date i will put it on the screen now if not i'm just gonna be standing here looking all awkward on the camera for all of you this is gonna sell out this is gonna sell out get ready Get ready to buy, get ready to purchase. Like, it's just gonna go like that. Maybe Hoka's ready for that, I don't know. All right, and do we need, let me know in the comments right now, vote, vote, vote. Do we need an Evo Speed Goat versus Speed Goat 5 running shoe battle? You tell me in the comments. Oh man, a neutral trail running shoe from Hoka. Oh, shout out to Carl, shout out to Carl, the, the original Speed Goat, okay. I don't even wanna do the twist test because I know I'm gonna get mud everywhere. Let me just back up from the computer here. So, nice, not too much, not too little. It's twisting, not too much, not too little, okay. There is the stack height, four millimeter drop, 33 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot, oh my my. Women size eight, men size nine on your screen for the weight. Now I do have a little bit of grit and grime in this shoe right now, but because we just got done testing, yeah, that's a little high. 9.1, we'll go with it. And yes, there is my score, solid score, considering the amount of midsole foam you get, okay? That's an impressive weight considering you get so much protection there under the foot for those longer distances, all right? Double layered jacquard mesh upper with stretch front vamp. Love it, very like, okay. But one quick caveat, your pinky toe may press up just a little bit on the outside here of the toe box. I prefer that, especially for a racing shoe, and I'll get to how I'll use this shoe here in a minute, uh, but keep it in mind if you have a really wide foot, it, this toe box might not work for you. But overall, loving this upper, loving the lockdown, uh, semi-gusseted tongue, butterfly, I'm calling it the butterfly tongue at the top. It's hard to show you right here, but basically, see that? See how it kind of looks? It's got some wings there. It just wraps around the top of your foot so nicely wraps around the top of your floor so nicely love it hoka great job there on the top of the tongue okay and overall score eight out of ten why heel counter oh just it's it's so i've never seen a heel tab quite like this where not only does it flare up but it also has a little bit of width to it, okay? So you're just really locked in really well, but also with comfort, okay? And let's do the heel counter, okay. It is flexing, but it really doesn't matter that it's flexing that much with respect to how that impacts the heel pocket lockdown because that it has that arch, that uh, angle in into your uh, the back of your heel, but then also this extra padding just felt amazing out there, even on the steep sections like you see here on your screen right now, where I'm just going going like up a very steep trail here in the Denver area. Overall, loving the upper, great, great job there. Hoka CMEVA compression molded, compression molded EVA midsole. Um, they're saying it's a slightly light, well, I agree with them, a slightly lighter uh, CMEVA than the Speedgo 4, and that it's a similar, if not the same compound as the Evo Speedgoat. I'll get to that in a minute as well. Ride and energy. Well, let's just do it now. Why am I dancing around the bush? It felt like the Evo understep. It really did. I was out there, as soon as I started running, I was like, oh, oh, this is something new for the Speedgoat lineup. Definitely, I'll just say, it felt 
I don't want to say totally different than the Speed Go 4, but all right, I'll say it felt totally different than the Speed Go 4. Way better, bouncier, better energy return. There's my scores for the midsole overall. And I'm going to say it's got a little bit of resistance. Like that's, you know, a little concern when you start to uh, really invest into high energy return midsoles is that how long will they survive out there? Now I realize I didn't take the shoe to 100 or 200 miles, but zero, zero, zero signs of any compression or any creasing through that midsole. And I took it on some pretty serious trails in the greater Denver area. Outsole, Vibram Mega Grip, just awesome. I mean, just biting the mountain. Um, I mean, not the perfect commuter shoe from pavement and concrete in the, in the urban jungle, the concrete jungle to the trails. If you have that crossover in your training, which a lot of people do here in Colorado on the front range, uh, but it would do the trick to commute and then go bite the mountain a little bit with that outsole grip. I loved it. And I think the, the, the width of the lugs is spot on, not too wide like I experienced in the Lone Peak 6. True to size for the fit, okay? No issues, um, except for, again, for me, I gave it a standard score, but if you have a really wide foot, just be aware of that pinky toe touching uh, right there on the outsole, or sorry, on the outside of the toe box, all right? Comfort score, oh. I don't even know what to, I've already said it. There it is, eight and a half, all right? Positives and drawback. Positive is the reminiscence, reminiscent of the Evo, and drawback is the slightly narrower toe box. Durability prediction, I went 350 to 400. That might be a little conservative. I don't know. And as always, send me pictures. That's why we source pictures. That's why we're DGR strong. I can't take shoes to three and 400 miles. So send me pictures if you do pick, when you do pick up this shoe and take it past that 350 mark. I'd love to see pictures of that midsole and that upper, okay? How will I use this shoe? Oh man, I'm not an ultra runner right now, but if I was, I would, I would 100% consider the shoe for 50K and above racing all right i will i <laughs> i'm gonna buy a pair okay when they are available and i will save them for summer training all right up in the mountains for that 20 to 30 i don't really train at 30 miles right now but that tw I'll, I'll, this I'll say it that three to five hour training stint up in the mountains definitely great shoe for that type of of training. Who is it best for um, if you are training for a 50K, all right, or a 50 miler? And I know, I believe, what did Walmsley wear down in uh, South Africa? Did he wear this? I thought he did. Who can let me know in the comments? Did Walmsley wear this down in South Africa? Uh, what was it in November, maybe? Uh, was it the Cape Town 100? No, Ultra? I don't even remember the name of it, but there it is on your screen. Price point, I mean, wow. I, I, 145, I'm very pleased. I think they could charge more. I really do. So don't do it, Hoka, but I think you could charge more because it's um, it's got that type of feel underfoot where you could train in it and race in it. That's nice to have that cross. A tweener alert. We haven't done a tweener alert in a long time. Training and racing, all right? Buy one shoe, knock out both, why not? Other shoes to buy, Solomon Ultra Glide. We got the Fuji Light 2, and of course, the Evo Speed Go, if you can find it, which nobody really can at this point. Shoe quick specs for the Hoka Speed Go 5. There it is. Soak it in. 33.29. All right. Double layered jacquard mesh. Just awesome. Uh, and that Vibram Mega Grip outsole. Oh, a heartbreaker. I thought for sure we were going to be in the eights, but we we're upper sevens. Not That's not even not too. That's great. All right. We were, we were close. 7.85 out of 10. So again, this shoe will sell out. It will sell out in 2022. You better be ready to buy when it becomes uh, available. All right, there you go, everyone. I'm excited. Comment of the day, question of the day. Shout out to Kurt. You get the comment of the day. The Evo Speedboat is my favorite trail shoe of all time. It is the one trail shoe I can use for every situation. It's not perfect because it's a little snug for my wide forefoot but it has a very forgiving upper. The Vibram outsole does fantastic on snow and ice. I concur. I used the Evo, I think it was last winter, or maybe it was two winters ago. I can't even remember, for long runs in the city through the ice and snow. I concur, Kurt. Um, I hope Hoka continues to make this shoe. 
Uh, and I hope others can enjoy it as much as I have. I put around 200 miles on mine and they are holding up well while being used on Rocky Colorado trails. Great job, Seth, and thank you for recommending this shoe. Question of the day. Um, here we go, I just, nothing to do with trail shoes. You know how I like to do it here. We talk about shoes, but we also talk about life. If a, a, a feast is held in your honor, what is on the table? A feast is held in your honor. What do you want on the table? What's your, basically what I'm asking, what is your favorite food for just a nice, delicious dinner? All right, what are you putting on the table? That's the question of the day. Thanks for tuning in. And again, let me know if uh, you want an Evo Speed Goat versus Speed Goat 5 running shoe battle. We'll go a little more granular in the analysis between the two shoes because there are some differences. I, will, I won't get into it now, but there are some differences um, between the Speed Goat 5 and the Evo, all right? And why not? We'll toss it to the Evo right here, all right? Full review, Evo full review right there, right there, right there. All right, Zeke Beauty, work hard, love each other. See you tomorrow.